Okay, so today we are, um, you are in the first series of Pandemic Perspectives. And today we're going to be hearing from our students. We'll schedule perhaps two more of these where we center different voices, but today we're centering the student voice. Our um, panelists today are Melissa Diaz, Kayleen hicks Petties, Alina Parvez, and Cindy Vasquez. We may also have um, Heaven Adams joining us later, who is our incoming ASO president. So the first thing that I want to do is take a little time to brainstorm who, our, who are our students. Okay, so I've created a little jam board, like you know I like to do. I'm going to put that in the chat. And you can use the sticky option or the text option um, to jot down some ideas of who our students are. That's the first um, page. And then the next page, I want you to brainstorm um, some ideas of what qualities do our students bring into the classroom. Okay, I'm just going to time us for five little minutes here. These are completely anonymous, so we won't know who is writing what. And we'll just take five minutes to get some ideas down. And I could maybe put music back on if I am skilled enough. Hi, Bernice. I can hear you. Yeah, I just wanted to know how to grab a sticker on that thing. I couldn't figure it out. Sorry. Okay. I, I'm not adept at Jamboard. I've done it with some other things. But I should have asked Marini. That's her specialty. But I, I how do I grab a sticker on that? Yeah. So I let me share writing. the screen. Huh? Say it again. Do you see my screen? Wait a second. I got to find it. It's on my, it's on a different web browser. Hold on. Don't let me take up too much of your time, but where did it go here? Okay. I see the, I'm on the Jamboard screen. Where do I grab? On the left, um, yeah. you'll see a menu with different tools and you, yeah. there's this little sticky note, um, looks like a square with lines. Let me see if I could get my uh, wait, I think I, uh, Okay. I got it. I see it now. I grabbed the oh, pen okay. and it was giving me yellow dots or something i don't know all oh, right yeah. I, think, I think i've got it let me see if i can get something down there real quick thank you i'm sorry right. we have two, two more minutes. minutes no worries two more minutes okay let me i won't unmute myself yet just because i can't get there okay sticky note sticky note um, mm -hmm. okay. 
Okay, that was about our time. I'm gonna share the screen so we can just look at these together. Um, so for who are our students, um, I'm just gonna sort of read a few of them out loud. Um, I will be sharing this link with you. So if you'd like to, um, in your own time, kind of look through it more carefully, um, you'll have an opportunity to do that. So our students are trailblazers and leaders, leave, living real life and working hard, producers of knowledge, people I can learn from. Many of them are parents, many in their 30s, that is true. Our students are wonderful and inspiring. So for what qualities do our students bring into the classroom? I like the one that says humor. I really appreciate it during these times. Strength, resilience, wisdom, passion, leadership, hard work, wonder, diversity, knowledge. So um, this is really kind of, this perspective I think is what will, um, sort of allow us to see our students and all of their human glory um, and looking at them from this perspective instead of one that is maybe looking at um, focusing on deficits are really going to help us um, nurture, learn with, learn from our students. Um, and if you may not be familiar with um, Tara Yoso's Whose Culture Has Capital. I'll leave a link um, to that in the, in the chat. Um, and everything that you all have already sort of intuitively maybe recognized in our students um, is backed by a theoretical framework. Um, funds of knowledge or community cultural wealth um, was uh, created by Yoso and others to um, really highlight the strengths that our students are bringing into the classroom, especially our students of color. So you'll see the six capitals that Yoso identifies in her article. Um, and these are maybe things that aren't immediately recognized by um, an institution like a community college, um, but are very real in helping our students um, sort of navigate this space. Um, so things like aspirational capital, the ability to maintain hope in the face of barriers, um, navigational capital, the ability to maneuver an institution um, like West LA College, um, linguistic capital. So many of our students are bilingual and maybe for a lot of their lives, they've been told that this is something that needs to be fixed. 
Um, but in reality, this is a strength, this ability to think in two different languages gives a deeper and more rich perspective. So this is actually an article that I assign in my class um, and students um, do really well with it. So if this is something that you just want to read for yourself to understand this theory a little bit more, um, or if you want to assign it so that students can kind of start to translate some of these strengths that they bring from their home life into this academic space, I think that would be a really um, rich activity. Um, Okay, just making sure everything's good in the chat. So this is something that I learned from one of my um, colleagues. Uh, no matter how long or short our time is, um, I just kind of want to give us a few minutes, three minutes, you're settled here, you're good. Um, but if you need to go run and get that coffee or need to do anything, um, I'm just going to give us three minutes before we invite our student panelists to the screen. So if you need a little stretch, you have a question, uh, please feel free. Cindy, do you want to try unmuting yourself to see if we can hear you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. And we just have one more minute, then we'll get started. Okay, does that give you a little opportunity to do whatever it was you needed to do before we um, hear from our student panelists? So um, here are our students. Um, we have Kayleen hicks Petties, Alina Parvez, Melissa Diaz, maybe Heaven Adams will join us in a moment, and we have Cindy Vasquez and her little puppy, uh, Leo. So I'm gonna stop my share so that we can see these wonderful students a little more clearly. Um, just give me a sec to minimize everything back here. Okay. And um, let's see, I'm gonna highlight you all and uh, we'll be able to see you more clearly. Don't be scared. Okay. And Melissa, 
All right, so I'm going to give you an opportunity just to introduce yourselves. Um, you can tell us your name, your major, and whatever else you want. We can start with um, Alina. Hi, my name is Alina. I am a child development major, and I'm the vice president of the Child Development Club as well at West LA. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa, you want to go next? Hi, I'm Melissa, and I'm a child development major, and I'm the secretary of the Child Development Club. The club is well represented here. Uh, Cindy, you want to go next? Hi, my name is Cindy. Um, I am a mom and a student. My major is nursing, and yeah. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, Kaylin. Hello, everyone. I'm Kaylin Hicks Pettis. I am um, a child development major, currently the Child Development Club president and treasurer. And I am a full time student at West, as well as a full time preschool teacher teaching young threes and nannying afterwards. Busy. Busy. Thank you so much for being here and um, sharing your experiences with us today. I know it's going to be really uh, valuable. And thank you to Marini for um, for having connections with many of these ladies and um, uh, sharing their info with me so that we can get together and present. So the first question that I want to ask is if you can explain some of the challenges that you have faced over the past year and a half, um, you know, going to school during a pandemic. I'll go first. Um, I think my um, biggest challenge has been, as some may know, especially within the CD group, I'm currently in Texas because of the pandemic. Um, and so, you know, two hour difference, and you know remembering dates and times it can you know be hard as well as communicating with like professors or you know admissions or whoever you know sometimes communication kind of gets lost in the sauce you know um, and it's hard when you know you're in a pandemic and you think oh okay maybe if i like go up there i can get this done or get this fixed but then it's kind of hard when you're States away and you don't you're not in the loop as to what's going on on campus is it closed or is this partially open or if I call will I get an answer or this department is closed but I can be rerouted to this person you know um and you know and I'm, I'm in Texas so <laughs> it's just that was my biggest challenge or has been my biggest challenge this past year and a half mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you um, for me, it was uh, being at home as a mom and having a child at home doing school here as well, taking care of everything for her and for myself while attending school. That was hard, um, especially because I'm a visual person. So if I'm not in school that I truly hate online classes <laughs> and I never took them pre-COVID. Um, so I had a really time adjusting to that. Like. I'm a very visual learner and I like to ask questions and visit office hours. So that not being a thing for me was really hard. Um, also, I was set this semester, coming semester uh, was supposed to be my last semester, but because of these challenges, I had to slow my roll a little and, you know, um, had to retake a class. Well, not, I withdraw, withdrew from a class and I had to retake it. So that was pretty hard. And just uh, the thought of, you know, I'm already in my 30s and the thought of having to go slower was really discouraging. And um, yeah, that was among some of the tough things that I had to go through. Thank you, Cindy. I, I couldn't imagine doing all of that plus taking care of a human. Um, so kudos to all the parents out there who are doing it and doing it really well. Alina or Melissa, did you wanna to respond to this question? For me, it was getting in contact with instructors 
because they don't email you back when they say in the syllabus they'll answer you within 24 hours or 48 hours that does not always happen <laughs> So getting in contact with instructors was the hardest thing for me. Yeah. And then as well as Cindy, I'm a visual learner. And so not having to be in front of someone, that was really hard for me as well. Thank you. For me, the most difficult thing during this pandemic with taking classes online was pretty much feeling like you don't have to help with professors at times more than you have help in person and having to struggle with having to have all the assignments done, turn it in with the computer, like you're in the computer with mm -hmm. pictures, having it done fast and not knowing if they can help you fast because what the language said, sometimes they don't email you quick and it gets mm -hmm. hard because you're like, okay, what do I do? How do I do this? And it gets really to the point where you're like, okay, I give up. I can't do it no more. I need help. And yeah. you have a tutor in person, like how you used to have a tutor at West Valley. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. What I'm hearing from most of you is that that communication piece could have been really helpful if you would have gotten a quicker response when you were in your moment of confusion or we, you didn't know how to proceed, having that response back within 24, 48 hours would have made it a little less challenging. Um, of course, with the unimaginable uh, difficulties that we've all faced um, just in our personal lives, um, I don't know anyone who hasn't been touched by this horrific uh, pandemic. Um, and then adding on to that, maybe a layer of complexity that really didn't need to exist right if you would have just had a response that would have been helpful during this time i'm going to move to the second question um, so we've talked a little bit about challenges um, i want to know what did teachers do to make your uh, pandemic learning experience uh, more manageable um, what so we've talked, we, you know, we've talked a little bit about maybe what we don't want to do. What are some things that professors did do that you would like more folks to do? I'll go first. Um, I think one of the things I really appreciated from a lot of professors was that they accepted late work, <laughs> you know, because they did um, sometimes not email right away. So you're stuck and you're like, wait, this there's a deadline for this. So what do I do? But for the next class, if we had a Zoom class or if he did get back to the email, um, they would just say, oh, it's OK, you can hand it back and you can get full points. I think that was really helpful in relieving that stress that you have as in like your grade and you don't want to just because of the pandemic, you don't want to get a lesser grade than you initially would have if you would have been on site. So that was quite helpful in my mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. Excellent. We hear you. I will go now. Um, yeah, um, I would like to say the pandemic has touched everyone in whether, you know, a negative way or a good way. I would know, I know for myself, um, I've been able to focus on school more. You know, I've been at West for, you know, quite some time. And within this past year, I have really been able to buckle down and focus on my classes. Um, and I also, but on the flip side, it's made it difficult because um, just as far as like teachers, like, you know, communication and not responding, but I really appreciated the few professors that I've had that like, you know, will said, you know, accept the late work or I've had professors like accept late work until like closer to the end of the, you know, semester. And that's great. And I understand not every professor can do that. Um, but when you don't have that communication, and you know your deadline is approaching and you're reaching out and you're reaching out it's just like you know well what do you do this is my grade I need this class I don't want another W I don't want to fail or I don't want I know I'll, I won't fail but I'll probably get a D but I need a, at least to see you know to you know have this class counted you know towards my associates or to transfer or whatever um and so that was my pro and con. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Thanks, Kaylin. Melissa, do you want to? Oh, Alina, I saw you unmute. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I liked that we had Zoom meetings because, like I said, I'm a very visual person. So I liked that we had Zoom meetings. So I would prefer if, if more instructors would give that. Yeah. Okay. So it was um, kind of like an office visit on Zoom, or was no, it, it was like an actual class? lecture class? Oh, excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. For me, it was more of a, um, giving you a second chance to take the test. Like mm -hmm. if you like, failed, they were like, oh, you could take it over. Mm -hmm. it, was, it helped a lot since like some people didn't study that much or didn't have a chance. I'm like, okay, I could take it, retake it again and see if I can pass this time. That was easy and it was, it was helpful too. Yeah, so giving multiple opportunities to demonstrate the knowledge, not just like, this one test and you can't redo it or essay and you can't redo it um zoom meetings for that extra support and then um, some flexibility on those deadlines right so that if something happened or um as as life happens often that you have just a few more days or more time um, in order to show that you've you've done the work, you you understand the concepts, is what I'm hearing. Um, let's see, we have a few more questions here, and then um, we'll also invite audience members to submit their questions um, in just a moment. So you can put those in the chat, or you can just unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, so question number three, what do you wish teachers knew about West LA students? Okay. I mm -hmm. would um, like everyone to know that we we're trying to you know <laughs> and we are human too and we have gone through the motions uh, of you know being in school as you know many of y'all have done and y'all have got to where y'all wanted to be and we are trying to get there and so i i you know, I said, I want this to be like a safe space for everyone to like, you know, so that we can work together. I don't want it to be like, well, I have more seniority over you and this is what you get. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit, you know? <laughs> um, but I just want to say like, it, I know it's kind of like, oh, I need more time. And it, but like stuff happens. Stuff happens with you and your life, stuff happens with us in our life. And, you know, yes, it's like, oh, they can make this deadline because we're in a pandemic and we're all at home. But then you have to think about, okay, well, what is going at home? Because, you know, some are moms or, you know, you maybe you're a wife or you are a husband or you care for someone. Me personally, I live, like I said, I live in Texas and I live with my grandparents here. My papa is currently in the hospital right now. And before, like, you know, a couple of days prior, he wouldn't take his medicine. He didn't want to eat. It was a whole enchilada. And I, you know, just say if school was in session and I had a test and I had to, my granny's calling me, come help me, you know, and then, but I'm in the middle of test and it's timed. And then I go help her and I come back and it's like, oh my goodness, I've got like 10 minutes left. And then I email a professor and then they're like, oh, well, better luck next time or, you know, or I don't get a response at all. And then, you know, that was a test, you know, a big part of my grade. So it's just things happen mm -hmm. and, you know, communication, that's all. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to, we're trying us as students, we're trying to get to where you are and, you know, just help us and we help you, you help us, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, basically. <laughs> Definitely, yes, in partnership, right? It's like we're, yes, we're in definitely. this together. Yeah. Right, we're not, you know, enemies, you know, let's build this up, right. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for that, Kaylin, powerful. 
So the question was, what do you wish teachers knew about West LA students? So I'd like to add to um, what Kaylin said that, you know, we have a lot going on as everyone else. Um, so we're really trying, despite feeling discouraged as students quite often throughout this whole thing. Um, but yeah, so we're trying. So let's try together, <laughs> pretty much, you know. Yeah. Alina or Melissa, do you want to respond to this question? Add, add anything? I agree with Cindy and Kaylin with everything that they said, because it's all true. They, we, they, we're at where they were at once. So they should understand or where we're coming out, coming from when we struggle. So they should help us. We help you. So you should help us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree with what the girls have said. We were at the same place. Mm -hmm. They were at the same place. And they should understand that we struggle too. Mm -hmm. And communication is more key. Yes. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, um, a lot of the times we kind of just recreate the way we were taught, right? Because a lot of us, um, maybe we didn't, uh, we don't have degrees in how to teach. We have degrees in our disciplines. And so we just kind of recreate or model the way that we were taught as students. And if we are just kind of continuing and perpetuating that model, it's not helpful we need to reflect on why is it that we have these rigid deadlines um why is it that we can't redo tests uh why is it that um uh there needs to be sort of a very vertical um organization with me at the top and students at the bottom why why are we doing that right and so if we reflect on these practices and see that um being in partnership and recognizing our students' efforts, recognizing them as whole human beings who are pulled in many, many different directions, as Kaylin was saying. Um, and honestly, a lot of us didn't, weren't pulled in so many directions when we were students. A lot of us maybe had the luxury of just being a student and maybe working a little side job. Not all, but that's, that's the reality for a lot of us. That's my reality. I was able to just focus on school. My parents paid for my tuition. My parents paid for my books. I had a little retail job where I can like, you know, buy my jeans or whatever. But in, in actuality, like I had it really good. I had it really easy. And that's not the, that's not the case for a lot of our West LA students who have many other responsibilities and they're juggling it all right yeah uh, i just about, wanted to I feel add like accessibility <sighs> sorry i, I don't know so about that. i said i just feel like it's all about accessibility and you know working together and i feel like for me personally in the classroom um i know I, like i said i work with like young three-year-olds but the universal the universal design of learning has helped me a lot you know, every UDL book I can find, it has helped. And, you know, whether you're working with a child that's exceptional or not, or, you know, another circumstance, or you're in higher education, just, you know, the way you teach your classroom, whether it's virtually or in person, it should kind of be kind of, you know, across the board. Okay. Yes, thank you. And then Cindy, I think you also wanted to add? Yeah, I just wanted to add also like, it would be helpful if instructors can remember that we're, you know, in, in over to 100, in 100 years or so, we are the first group of people who have to manage to do school and these other things under a pandemic. So there's like no guidebook for us. And even our professors don't know what it's like because when they were in school, this, this, this wasn't the case. So it would be a good reminder to like, we're trying our best, you know, um, under the circumstances that we're in, along with like, for me, for me and my kid. So it hasn't been done before. So we're just going day by day, you know. 
Yeah, um, instructor, staff, and admin in the audience, can you use a little heart emoji if you are understanding what our students are saying? Are you picking up what, what they're putting down? Okay, I see hearts galore. Okay, so we hear you. Um, okay, maybe, I, I don't know if this is a little repetitive, but this is my last question. And then um, we'll have about 20 more minutes for dialogue between audience and our panelists. Um, so for, for me, my last question is, you know, pandemic or not, what can the college do, instructors, staff, what can we do what can we do better to support our students? For me, so I'm in, I use a wheelchair going everywhere. And so having the shuttle that we once had to come back, I feel like that would be a very essential thing for me, not only me, but people who have injuries. Yes. And so, yeah, I think bringing back the shuttle would be very, very helpful. Thank you, Alina, for that great point. I know we've talked about the shuttle for um, a few years, but I think we need to sort of zero in on it and make sure that we're giving that access to our students. Yeah, thank you. I think really just to piggyback on all that I've said, just, you know, the communication. Mm -hmm. um, that's really what it boils down to and being, um, you know, having teacher, student, you know, partnership. Um, and I, like I said, I understand that not every professor can extend their deadlines to like the end of, you know, the semester or something, but, and you also have to use discernment, you know, I understand maybe not everyone will, you know, like not everyone will, I guess, use their best judgment and, you know, try to abuse, oh, my professor let me do this. So, you know, whatever, because you also have to be respectful of their time, your time. Um, and now you're, you know, you've done all this and you put all this pressure on your professor, but, you know, like you, so and that's when you use your discernment as a professor. Okay. I can't do this with this student or, you know, because it is, you know, we don't want to wear y'all down as, you know, because we don't want to be, you know, worn out as well. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, just working with this, you know, understanding the world we're living in today is not the world that you were brought up in. And, you know, we are faced with many things, whether you are a person of color or you're not, you know, there's other outside things on top of, you know, being in a pandemic, being in a school, being a mom, you know, working or, you know, maybe your job is about to shut down because of the pandemic, you know, or now I've got to figure out how I'm going to eat, but I got a deadline, you know, at 11.59. Also, I have noticed within this last semester, you know, that some professors are putting like nine o'clock deadlines. And I'm sorry, but I'm like, you know, and I know like sometimes it'll be in their syllabus like, oh, 11.59, 11.59. Now me, I have a list of things that I have to do, you know, and then I have to add two hours. And so I'm like, okay, I got it. And sometimes, you know, professors don't update their syllabus. And so you look back and you're like, it's at 11.59, but then you log in and that assignment is locked. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, no. And then it goes back to communication. Oh, they're not emailing me. Or let's just say that there's a, um, a project coming up and I need help and they have office hours and their office hours are from this time to this time. But then they cancel because of what they have going on in their life. But then it's like, oh, my gosh, but I need help on this. You know, what do I do? Like, you know, and then the next time they have office hours or they're available, the, the assignments do. It's done. And that, you know, what you get is what you get, you know? And then you just, you're moving on to the next and it just becomes a cycle. And yeah. then it's another week and another week. And, and then too, I feel like maybe professors don't take into account that we also are trying to take other classes as long as, you know, as well as their class, mm -hmm. you know? So we've got a full load on top of all of 
the other things going on in our lives and in the world. Uh, so yeah, but I just feel like, you know, as a student, you take accountability, as a professor, you take accountability and you work together and you work hard to get to where you both need to be. Because I'm sure as a professor, yes, you are where you need to be or would like to be in your life. But I'm sure you also have goals that you're trying to reach as well as we as a, a student are trying to get to where we want to be professionally and educationally. <laughs> so yeah. Yes, thank you, Kaylin. Melinda, I see your hand. I'm just gonna go to a few of the other students and then I'll come back to you. Does that work? I just want to add on to some of the things that Kaylin said and just to, I cannot believe that as a professor um, and I've been teaching for 20 years, if professors are putting a nine o'clock, 9 p.m. deadline date, I mean, that's not taking into account that students, you know, have to work and maybe are trying to do their homework and their assignments and their quizzes and stuff after the work is finished, after they eat dinner or after they put kids to bed. So please, mm -hmm. anybody who's on here, I ask you to consider doing 1159 just because mm -hmm. so much, I see a lot of my students are turning in their work and like right at that deadline because that's the only quiet time they have to do things. So please, you know, consider that. Also, I wanted to explain to the students just as a point of power, anything that is written in the syllabus, any deadline, like you said, if something's 1159 in the syllabus, that is the golden document. So if whatever is said in Canvas, if there's a discrepancy, you go into Canvas and you say, oh, my assignment's already closed. It's 9 p.m. It has the syllabus is the golden document and you have a right there to challenge that. OK, so it's Canvas can be like change around. But again, what when you go through a grievance or you have an issue, that is the binding document is the syllabus. I just want all students to really know that if you have to bring something up with a professor. Thank you, Melinda. I appreciate Thank that comment. Um, Cindy, Alina, or Melissa, did you want to respond to this last question? Pandemic or not, what can West LA do, do to better support their students? Uh, no pandemic, I think communication, well, pandemic or no pandemic, communication is up there. Um, but in terms of pandemic, I also would like to add that what helped me, um, in some of the classes that I felt most comfortable with and confidences in is, was when they had like a scheduled Zoom, mm -hmm. let's say Tuesday or every Wednesday or twice a week, instead of having just throwing PowerPoints to you and you do your own work. Because for me, a visual person, like I said, coming from uh, getting out of that routine and into Zoom just, you know, from one day to another, it was very hard. And I think that a routine works better for as a student, you know, like I used to enjoy listening to podcasts and driving to school and then going to tutoring. And so having all that taken away to just going straight to PowerPoints was, is really hard. And it's in a way a little discouraging, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So I, for me, I would prefer if it's, even, even if it's just one class in Zoom scheduled, that would be great because it gets you into that routine. Um, you know, you prepare yourself, you, you're ready to log in. It just helps so much. Um, and another thing, it, it kind of helps you get to know some of the other students. Like in my last class in statistics, me and another girl, uh, we're always helping each other out, you know, because we had that interaction. And that's another thing that's been really hard in the pandemic. It's the student interaction, because when you are online and the professor's not getting back to you, at least you can rely on your fellow students to be like, hey, did you do this? Did you get that? And with this, it's hard to do that. So when you have a scheduled Zoom, that alleviates that in a bit, in a way. So like I said, in my stats class, me and another girl, we were like always asking questions. So we exchanged numbers and we would always help each other out. Like, did you get this, no you know, mm -hmm. uh, homework and so on. So I think mm -hmm. that would really help yeah. for instructors. Yeah, learning is social, right? And so you need that interaction between you and your professor, between you and other students. That's how we sort of are able to take information 
um, uh, digest it and, and really um, understand it. And so if you're not having, if you're not being given opportunities to interact, exchange ideas with your classmates, with your professor, then you're really sort of, you know, cutting the learning at the, I don't know what the phrase is, you're, you're, you're basically um, swimming without a propeller or whatever it is. And so you know, we're, most of us are teaching online again. I think Marini is doing a um, workshop on student engagement. And so if you're listening to our students saying like, oh, I'm tired of just the PowerPoints and you're wondering how you can get your students to talk to each other, even in an online environment, um, I really encourage you to um, go to Marini's workshop. Um, I would Alina, just say that the oh, sure. icebreakers, maybe like, I know some, I have seen some professors do like mandatory Zoom meetings and that's great, but then you also have to, you know, be, like I said, accessible for the kids that may have work and they can't. And so, you know, um, what is it? Record the Zoom meeting for, uh, you know, students, but I would put it in there like, you know, this, the Zoom meeting is mandatory and I hope that you can make it, understanding that you can't. Here is, you know, the link and maybe, hold them accountable, I don't know. I have a, I also take classes through Moore Park and I have a professor who said that, you know, your Zoom meetings are mandatory. Um, it's your participation grade, um, but if you can't make it, you know, here's the recording. I think that's very helpful. I think that's fair. Um, and so maybe that's something that can be incorporated, you know, through engaging in icebreakers. We do icebreakers in our child development club. And let me tell you, we are all buddy buddy. <laughs> we all text you know and I think that's great to have that friendship that connection oh you're struggling me too you need help okay I got you you know okay let, let's all come together we all are confused on the same question the same problem let's go to our professor and see what we can do you know to remedy it um so yeah but I see there's some questions in the chat and I think they're really really good <laughs> okay okay let's go to the questions um, in the chat um, the first one comes from uh, Anthony Cuomo. Can you give us an example of when you felt like your professor really cared about you uh, when you felt validated while learning online during the pandemic? And or what characteristics of an online class allow you to be successful? For example, check-in surveys, free textbooks, videos, Zoom office hours, like you all were just saying course content that makes you feel represented and if that was a really long question it's in the chat if you want to um review it uh, i can give you an example it goes back to the zoom professor um the zoom with the professor i had he would record it so he didn't punish you if you couldn't attend him but if they were recorded, like there was one or two times that I had to log off early, but I really wanted to know what was a lecture about. And I had the option of going back and, and checking what he said, or if any of the students had questions that, you know, um, were good for me or et cetera. Um, so I think that's a great example that you can have a choice. You have choices, right? You have choice to attend the, the schedule Zoom. But if you can't, you're not punishable. And I think that made a great, uh, that was a great thing for, for my academic semester. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think um, um, having a, a professor that, you know, you feel validated and, you know, oh, they really care about you is when they do check in. The surveys, the check in surveys are so helpful. Like I have had professors do it like, you know, after like a test or something, you know, maybe two weeks or a weekly. And that's helpful because I feel like it helps me, okay, you know, know where I'm at in this class. But also I think it helps the professor as knowing, oh, this student or multiple students are having trouble with this particular, you know, area. Um, and so it can, you know, maybe help you, I guess, have a better, delivery and how you're pre presenting the material for your student so that we can grasp the material, you know, to excel. Um, mm -hmm. Free textbooks. Yes, I love it. 
um, because textbooks are expensive. You know, it's another question, how much are you spending on textbooks? You know, not all textbooks are available through um, Amazon, you know, or Check, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, for rental. And sometimes they are expensive. And if you don't meet the qualifications to be an EOPNS, then you've got to figure it out. But, you know, that goes again with what you got going on in your life. You need to pay a hundred and something dollars for a textbook that you're going to need for semester, but you have to pay your light bill or your phone bill or you have a medical bill or your daughter or something happened with, your, you know, your child. Um, so that's kind of hard to keep up with, you know, purchasing textbooks. And it's kind of, I guess, sad because if you don't have your textbook, then, you know, you might not do well in your class then you're trying to like, oh, okay, I can stick it out, I can figure it out, but now you've missed the deadline for you know withdrawing and now you've got a W or you failed, or like I said, you've got that D on your transcript and it doesn't look good. Um, so there's multiple things that go into it. I think free textbooks and having all the documents and resources within Canvas is very helpful, um, you know, or, professors that provide the book that's needed, you know. Um, I know some professors will provide, oh, hey, there's this link you could use. Um, they have free textbooks and, you know, ours is in it. You know, here you go. Um, and so, yes, and I like physical books, but I'm going to make it work if I don't have to pay a hundred something dollars, you know, for it. So um, I think that's very helpful. Like I said, office hours, you can, I guess, consistent as you can be you know um mm -hmm. as long as you still have that communication like i've mentioned um to you know other students professors will have in their syllabus oh text me if you have any questions but um then they don't reply or they'll they'll give you your email and say okay you can email me if you have any questions but don't di don't email me directly email me through canvas but then they don't see it until weeks later you know and you're just like, well, what do I do? Like, send it up. So um, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, that's my take on it. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylin. Um, Melissa, did you want to respond to Anthony's question? Can you give us an example of when you felt like your professor really cared about you or when you felt validated while learning online? Okay, so I had a professor last semester who checked on us and she would say this is a safe zone so you guys can talk and express and if she's like if you ever like need to talk she's like you guys can email me and she would just ask you she's like give me a brief little part about yourself so you can not so i can know what to work with you on mm -hmm. and when i had my struggles i was like okay this is what i struggle with she helped me out throughout the semester and that's something that I felt like okay she cares about us yeah more. yeah so not only offering the help but also giving it when when you ask yes. right excellent Alina for me it was getting the multiple attempts for like tests and not mm -hmm. like being penalized for doing it late or something or doing even mm -hmm. assignments late you still got like the credit that you deserved for mm -hmm. late assignments. That was my thing. Yeah. So having an understanding that uh, professors are understanding that you may need more time that made you feel like they cared about you. Yeah, they weren't seeing you as like, oh, that student didn't turn it in too bad. But that there's like sort of, um, uh, yeah, like an understanding. Um, and then did you? Yeah, Cindy. I also remember something that was really helpful from one professor. So what he would do is he will allow five to 10 minutes after class for uh, Zoom office hours. Mm -hmm. So I think that helps students who are not comfortable speaking up in class. So a lot of them will just wait. There was no one speaking in class, maybe two or three. And then after class, they would just wait for him. And that's also a time I think that um, I appreciated that he did that because at one point there was he asked me and another student have you guys talked to so and so they're not they haven't been attending class and turning in work and I'm a little concerned so if you can reach out and let her know you know that I really want her to pass this class and I'm willing to still take her work I just 
I, I felt that that was such a caring way to show us that, you know, he would, he really is interested in us passing the class. And I really appreciated that because he went out of his way. He didn't have to do that, but he did. So I thought that was very kind and caring. Yeah. Um, yeah, recognizing that maybe being quiet in class isn't, we're not taking that as you're not being interested in class or you're not being present, but maybe you are a little shy. Maybe you don't feel comfortable unmuting yourself in front of everyone. So giving students multiple ways to interact um, is gonna be really helpful for all types of students, introverts, extroverts. Um, I think in the classroom, we really, um, uh, we sort of encourage that extrovert um, student. We like the student who talks back to, talks back to us because it makes us feel good. Um, we have that engagement, but we can't uh, misjudge the quiet student. We have about 10-ish um, minutes left. Um, do we have any other questions from our faculty, staff, or admin who are in the room? Hi, Leslie. This is Carmen. Hi, Carmen. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm on my phone because my my audio is not working on my computer. So I just wanted to thank the students for all of their um, their comments and um, being open to share their experiences with us. And and I hope that you know, as an administrator, we can also help the students to grow and uh, make things easier for you. Um, reach out to us. We're available. And um, you know. We want you to be successful. So that's our goal. So thank you again. Thank you, Carmen. You're welcome. Let's see. I see Melinda's hand up. So I'm going to go to Melinda and then I'll read Laura's um, question in the chat. I want to bring up the issue of communication um, as far as uh, instructors responding back to students, because this was a problem way before COVID. Um, and mm. especially a big problem with the online classes, because on campus, you could always just find the instructor, talk after class, go to the office hours. But um, this is this is a huge problem because with even online and then now that everything was online with COVID is that the you know students are saying that the instructor doesn't get back to me or takes a long time or doesn't grade my assignments in time. I don't know my standing in class. And so I like that Carmen's on the in the workshop because she's a dean but there has to be more that we can do to mm -hmm. for the accountability of these instructors for better communication so i i don't know yeah. should, should there be like a, a suggestion box that students can go to instead of this like mm -hmm. other long ambiguous channel of trying to report an instructor or afraid to re report an instructor because they don't want it to come back on them but there has to be some other way to get some of these instructors to check their their um their emails, check Canvas inbox more often so that they can build that communication because this is like one of the number one complaints and it needs to be fixed. Yeah, I agree, I agree. I mean, we have the evaluation process, right? But that that kind of happens every couple of years. So yeah. something that's more immediate. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a two year process. And that right. has to be like a collection of complaints like formal complaints. Um, and it actually has to go through the Dean or somewhere that th that person has a collection of bad, of complaints about poor communication. There has to be something else that gets it fixed in the middle of the semester. So a student doesn't have to feel lost or ignored the entire class and maybe get a poor grade because of the instru instructor's poor. It's not that hard to check email. I teach five classes. It's not that hard. You just have to make it a priority in your class. Mm -hmm. I love the passion that you're speaking with, Melinda. I could tell. Yeah, this is it's something an that, ongoing problem. Yeah. And can I can yeah. I respond to Melinda? I just want to piggyback on that. Um, yeah, I've had students contact me because they've had issues getting uh, in contact with their with their faculty, and so um, what we've done here is they I've gotten the phone number of the faculty and I call them directly so that I can reach out to them, and make sure that they. Uh, get in touch with the students. So I don't want students to be afraid to reach out to the dean. It's it's not a bad thing. Sometimes, you know, the faculty forgot to open their shell or forgot to publish their 
their shell. And, and so we can reach out to them. Otherwise, they don't know. And this goes unheard or unseen, you know. So I, I encourage you, if, if you have a problem, reach out to us so we can reach out to the faculty. I'm How would they know? On that. Okay. I'm sorry, because I have personally had that where I had a pest professor not like put in my grade and I was just like, um, what happened? Oh, I, I was incomplete. And I was like, okay, well, I finished, you know, all of my work, you know, let's move forward. Let's put my grade on the transcript, ready to go, email her and everything. And it just, I wasn't getting a response. And it took finally, like, it's hard. I will say, you know, this is a safe state, but it's hard to even get in contact with a counselor. And like I said, I'm here in Texas. It, it is hard. I literally had to take like random classes just to qualify to not random because I will say that I'm child development major transitioning into biology. So I was like, okay, I'm eventually going to need this class, but I had to take on extra, you know, extra workload just to qualify for EOP and S just to know that I was going to speak to a counselor to make sure that I was on track to, you know, graduating or I didn't, you know, mess up my own ed plan, you know, trying to figure it out myself because I feel like there's so many students who are like, well, literally there's, I've been reaching out and no one's helping me. Let's just buckle down. Let's go to that get the A, B, C, D, E, you know, and figure this out. This is what I'm working towards. And I, I think I need this AFM class or I think I need this communication class. So let's just put them together because I need to speak to someone, you know, and I feel like you shouldn't have to go through those hoops and hurdles to, you know, to figure out yourself, to finally get to where you need to get to. And then also, I just feel like as a student, we shouldn't like have to, where's the disconnect? You know, it like, you know, it shouldn't take, it's just checking an email, literally like a minute of your time. Okay, write it down on a sticky note. I'm busy with this. Let me come back to this. Um, and, you know, you move forward with your day and you get it done and you check those things off your list. I just feel like it, hard because you know there are or you know maybe some professors who are like mm, I, they went to the dean about this situation I didn't like that and you have better you know higher seniority than me you're the teacher I'm the student you know and you know maybe you know you, students just have that fear you know I don't want to be penalized and I just feel like I shouldn't have to go to the dean for a professor to email me back because I've been emailing you multiple times and I haven't gotten a response and then they email you and boom you get a mm. response mm. Mm. and that is not okay that is not okay <laughs> I'm upset for you I think you were talking about like the seniority but like students are a priority Right, like right. you, you, you are and the I senior. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, we can go to the deans and they will do that for us. That is wonderful. I really appreciate that. I'm just saying that we have to find the disconnect and connect it so that we are all on the same path, the same road mm -hmm. to success. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I like Hari's comment in the chat. Um, even though one unresponsive teacher is one too many, I'd like to know how common this problem is at West, right? But we have like four students kind of saying the same thing. This isn't the first time I've heard of it. Um, and so this, this communication piece is, a I'd say, a low hanging fruit, something that we can easily individually and collectively address. We see that our students are feeling like they're out there struggling alone. And I know that's not what we want. And so I think we can use, really use this moment to um, kind of propel us in another direction in the direction that I know that we prefer to be in when we're, we're supporting our, we say we're supportive, but not in practice, it doesn't seem like, right? Um, Laura, I see your hand up. I was just gonna say, and I, I do think that it would be great to have some sort of check-in or accountability, maybe from the chair, maybe, you know, just some other layer that, 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 um, the professors know is, is watching because, um, because, you know, it, it's, I think that that helps, it helps motivate professors, but one thing I used really changed my life when it came to responding to students was the Canvas app. So 
Um, so it notifies me, you know, I literally like at 11 at night, boom, it pops up like a text and, and it's like a student has emailed you and, um, and it's really, really helped me. So I'm just saying for professors, um, canvas app, um, and then allow it to notify you. And then, um, I felt like I was like, boom, 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 like, um, a lot more responsive, um, just because it was a lot easier <laughs> to get the message. Yeah, that's a good strategy. Um, I have the Canvas app, but I don't have notifications on for anything. So maybe, maybe turning on that notification would be helpful. Um, and then Sandra, I see your hand up. And then Laura, I'll go back to your question in the, in the chat in just a moment. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much to the students for um, being transparent and honest with what your experiences have been and what your needs are, because that's something that I think we are constantly trying to address and to adjust, um, especially during a pandemic, especially as we are all continuing to study, learn, and teach remotely. Um, just one suggestion that has worked for me as an instructor is that I really prefer to keep my student communication separate from my campus email because in my campus email, I get spam. I mean, I get, I'm not kidding. I get like 25 emails a day on my campus account. And that has nothing to do with students. It's just stuff that goes on on campus and, and throughout the district and sometimes even outside of our district. And so for me to have my communication only be through Canvas is so helpful because I know that when I log into Canvas, that's where I'm going to just focus on responding, communicating, and helping my students. Um, and then the campus email is, is a separate sort of a separate component or a separate time period of my day. And so I, in my syllabus and through my communications with my email with my students, I always make sure like make sure you contact me through Canvas because campus email is is too saturated with stuff. And it's not Outlook is a horrible to me. Outlook is a horribly organized mail server. So to find a student email is a lot harder on Outlook than it is on Canvas. Um, so that would be one suggestion that I would give to my colleagues is just having two separate entities for campus issues or campus organization and then for just student components that that uh, that's easier for us to manage on online. Thank you so much for that suggestion, Sandra. I love that we have um, two easy ways to be more responsive to our students. One is download, downloading the app, turning on the notifications, and then one is, um, you know, using Canvas strictly for that student communication, but making sure that you are uh, checking the Canvas and actually responding, right? Um, Mered, I see your hand up. Hi. Um, so first, I, I also wanted to thank the students. I think it's helpful, although I feel like probably a lot of us in the room are not the kind of professor they talk about. Um, so it's kind of like it, it feels really bad to me because I feel like, you know, I um, I think I'm trying exactly to do everything that they said, and it's just kind of feel like. Um, so one thing that I wanted to say is about that I I don't know also what to do when you get complained, you know, about colleagues. I feel like it's very unprofessional for me to report that on the other end it really hurts me to hear you know that I'm spending all my days on the computer uh, responding and doing the zooms and doing everything and then some people are just kind of like doing other things and not there for the students but I don't know exactly how to deal with it and I, I kind of feel like it would have been better if the students had a safe place to uh, to report that and not go through um, us, you know, to report on colleagues. So that's uh, one thing. The other thing I wanted to say to respond to um, uh, what Sandra said about the that uh, Canvas is so much easier because it also tells you which class. If you teach multiple classes, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes students send me email and I don't know which class. So I, then I have to kind of start looking at my roster. And sometimes, you know, like I had a semester with 80 students, it's just really hard to try mm -hmm. to look at all these uh, but the only problem that I, I, I kind of like I'm upset with Canvas is that when a student drops the class and sometimes they drop the class to be take it uh, to, to maybe retake it next semester to get an incomplete or something, everything about the students kind of disappear, uh, including emails. And it's 
mm. you know, at, where you have email on um, um, the Outlook, you can actually always have it. But mm. some information about students, you know, ongoing, many times, you know, they start and something happen. I almost every semester I have at least one incomplete or, you know, mm -hmm. in, um, I just kind of wish we could capture um, yeah. all these previous conversations and not have things disappear on us, uh, yeah. including, including the grades. Like if I did not record it separately uh, and download once in a while, then things that the student did is, is, is gone. And it, we have to think about for students, sometimes it's a journey that takes a little bit more than one semester. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, but we mm -hmm. can still complete this journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Vered. Um I want to say that um, really quick, because I have to go. I have a 12.30 appointment, um, which is like 10.30 all time. Um, but yeah. I really appreciate that because I feel like we only see Canvas from a student's point of view. We don't know what it's like from a professor, a faculty, you know, point of view. So I think that's really great. Now I have a better understanding as to why professors are saying, no, email me through Canvas only. Now we just got to get that connection and be more intentional with replying to those, you know, Canvas emails and stuff. But I really appreciate that, that point of view. Um, and so, yeah, I would put my email on the chat just if y'all have any questions or whatever for me um, but I do have to go and Thank I really appreciate so this platform um, and I think this is very helpful maybe I know you said this is series one um, mm -hmm. so maybe in different series y'all have different professors different students you know to so come mm -hmm. in and we all come together I think that's what it's all about yeah I agree thank you thank Kaylin, you, Kaylin. Thank you so much. yeah thank we thank you. you so much we thank you so much for what you, the insights you've given us. Thank you. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I know that we are at time, but I do just want to, I know Anthony had his hand up. So Anthony, you want to have the last word? Or did he leave already? Oh, maybe he left already. Okay, um, Vered, did you have your hand up? No, I, I just removed it. Okay. All right, then we are going to end um, on time. Um, you're getting a <laughs> lot of love in the chat. Um, I wanna thank our students again for um, being uh, vulnerable and transparent and honest with us. Um, you are the reason that we are all here. And um, although you may be preaching to the choir a little bit, the choir needs to practice and we're gonna go out and um, recruit some more choir members. So um, thank you so much. And I'll see a lot of you online and I'll see some of you in the fall semester. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you students for being here. Alina, Cindy, Melissa. Big hugs to you all. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you very much, Leslie. And to all of you, it's been Yay. really, really great. Very interesting and enlightening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank all. you, Leslie. Thank you. It's a good job. Good job. <laughs> okay, okay. Very important. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Good to see you. Thank you, students.